Good morning, my name is Neil and this is Layla and we both attend Sunday School here at St. Bartholomew's. Together we'll be leaving the service today. Welcome pupils, teachers, parents and everyone here. It's great to see you today for our harvest service. Before we begin, let us pray to say thank you for the gifts that have been brought. <laughs> Dear God, at harvest time, we think about how we are so glad that you provide us with food to eat. Please bless those who spend their lives working to make sure our food is fresh and plentiful. Let us have a few seconds of time to think about those who need our help. We ask in your name that you will help those that have had to flee from their homes for war, flooding, famine, or other reasons, and help them in their time of need. In Jesus' name, amen. I would now like to invite Isaac to the stage to read Psalm 67. Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy for you, uh, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. 
May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvests. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us, bless us still. So that's all ends of the earth will fear him. Please stand to sing indescribable. We will now read the confession together. Please say the words in bold. We are not always gentle, kind, humble, meek, and patient as you want us to be. Father, in your mercy. Please hear us. We say, think, and do things which hurt others and hurt you. Father, in your mercy. Please hear us. We find it difficult to put up with and forgive others. Father, in your mercy. Please hear us. We don't include you in all that we do. Father, in your mercy. Peace May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Please stand to declare our faith in you. Do you believe in trusting God, the Father, the source of all being and life, the one whom we exist? We believe in trusting Him. Do you believe in trusting God, the Son, Jesus Christ, who took human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe in trusting Him. Do you believe in trusting God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We would now like to invite the pupils and teachers from the Redeemer to stage.
Now the school are going to read. The first reading comes from Deuteronomy 24, 19, 22, page 202. <coughs> When you are harvesting in your field and you overlook a sheep, do not go back to get it. Leave it for the family, the fatherless and the widow, so that the Lord, your God, may bless you in the work of your hands. When you beat the olives from your trees, do not go over the branches a second time. Leave what remains for the foreigner, the fatherless and the widow. When you harvest the grapes in your vineyard, do not go over the vines again. Leave what remains for the foreigner, the fatherless and the widow. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt. That is why I command you to do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading number two. Luke chapter 12, 13 to 21, the parable of the rich fuel. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you. Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground, did a, the ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, 
This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And then, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I will say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to be God. Now for the part of the service that you've all been waiting for, the prophet Shah. see you're very upset. I'm really sorry to hear about that. I wonder what we can do next time to make sure you have all your harvest not eaten by slugs and snails. Well yeah that's good for next year Grandad. but what am I going to do for this year? I haven't got any food. My harvest failed. I don't know what to do. Hi Grandad. Hi Billy. Hi everybody. You'll never guess what I've just been doing. I've just been gathering all my harvest. I have so much. I am going to make a pickle and jam and chutney with it. And I'm going to store it away in my big store. I'll never need to go to the supermarket again. Hey, Sally, can I have some of your harvest? Mine's all been eaten by bugs and insects and slugs and worms. There's nothing left for me at all. Sorry, Billy, I can't really share. I'm putting mine in the store cupboard to last me till next year, as my electri electricity bill is going to be huge this year. I know Grandad will tell us we should all share, but really, I need to keep it all in my store cupboard so I don't run out of any food for me. But, but, uh, 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 Grandad! Now then, now then, children. Let's stop blabbering, Billy. And Solly, you are correct. I would tell you to share, even though you might have an increased electricity bill this year, sharing is still what God would want us to do. He talks about sharing the harvest in the Bible. And in the book of Luke, the New Testament, we can read about a parable Jesus told. Parables like a story. It talked about a rich man who had got a load of food in his harvest. Absolutely fields and fields are full of food. And he didn't have enough room to store it. So he decided he was going to build bigger barns to store all his food in. So he'd never have to worry about food again. Surely, Grandad, if you have that much food that you won't run out of space, you should share it. Especially if you can't eat it all. Yeah, that means you need to share with me, Sally. Because I haven't got any crops or food, but you have got loads. Well, now carry on. Jesus carries on to tell us a story. And he says that God calls this man a fool because he forgot where all the good things come from. He forgot that God is the good giver and everything comes from him. The man wanted everything here and now, but forgot to get ready for heaven. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So all that he had stored up was useless when he died. How sad that he died without living for God and sharing with others as God had said. And in the message at the end of the story, Jesus said in verse 21, 
This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. What do you mean, is not rich towards God? Jesus says a bit later on in the story that it, what it means to trust Jesus and have to have treasure in heaven. To be rich towards God is to use all we have for God's kingdom and to help others. Oh, well, I see. Everything I have comes from God. Now I'll use it to serve him rather than keeping it for myself. Here you go, Billy. Have some carrots. Oh, thanks, Sally. That's really kind. It really makes me happy to see you two sharing again, just as God taught us all to do. Bye, everybody! Bye! Excellent. So we're going to have a bit more of a think now about a Bible passage that we read, that second Bible passage, but also that our puppets helped us think about a bit more. Right, in this Bible story, there's a man, okay, and he comes up to Jesus and he says, I want the inheritance. I want the family money. Give it to me now. Help me, Jesus. Come on, help, help me get the family money. Okay, and Jesus says, are you asking me? And then he tells a story because he's realised that this man is a bit greedy. He tells a story which is like a parable, parable story with a meaning. And in this parable, and I've called this sermon, How to Be Truly Rich and Not Be a Fool. So I'll probably offend a few people. There we go. Okay. Uh, there's a rich man. Okay. There he is, counting his dosh. And he's about to get even richer because he's planted all his crops. And he's got a bumper harvest. It's great. He's got loads. Now, in my family this year, we planted some seeds. My son, Ezra, he planted some tomatoes. And he got loads. We had hundreds of them. And every morning, they would go and pick them off and eat them. Um, my, I planted some chilies. Okay. And all I got were two measly chilies. <laughs> That was a bit rubbish. And then my daughter planted, she had a pepper plant, and all she got was a bit of a slightly shriveled pepper. How many of you planted anything this, this year? Yeah? What have you done, Isabel? Tomatoes and cucumbers. Did you get a good harvest or a bad harvest? So pears bad, tomatoes bad, cucumbers good. <laughs> Pears good. <laughs> okay. What about you? Three apples from your neighbour's tree. Amazing. Look at that. I like it. If your kids are hungry, send them up the neighbour's tree. Okay. Well, this guy in the story, he, he had a massive list. His cucumbers, his pears, his apples, everything. He had everything, loads and loads of harvest. And he'd harvested some of it, and he'd filled up his shelves, and they were full to bursting. Then he filled up his barn, and that was full to bark bursting. And he even hadn't started on his grain, he had a massive harvest. Isn't that great? At this time of year, we want to celebrate a good harvest, don't we? We want there to be plenty of food in the world. We want it to grow, and for people to have loads of food because it's a great gift from God. But then something goes wrong in this man's thinking. It gets the next bit wrong, and it means that God says he's a fool. There's three, three reasons I think God says this man is a fool from this story. Here's the first thing. He's got all his harvest, but he forgets about God. Now I'm going to read about, I'm going to read what he says again, okay? And every time he mentions God, I want you to do a thumbs up. Can we practice that? So every time he mentions, he says God, put your thumbs up. 
Yeah? Every time he talks about himself, he says, I or my or myself or himself, I want you to do thumbs down. Okay? So every time he talks about God, thumbs up. Every time he talks about himself, I, myself, himself, thumbs down. All right? Let me read what he says. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, talk to himself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. How many times did he mention God? Yeah? Zero. How many times did he mention himself? Yeah? Pardon? Loads of times. He forgets about God. He forgets that God gave him life so he could sow his crops and work his farm. He forgets that God sent the sun and the rain so that the crops could grow and produce food. And so he thought, these are my crops. I work for them. They're mine, mine, mine. You know, we've got so much good stuff. Yeah. Everyone's got some great stuff here, I'm sure. We're one of the richest areas in Blackburn here. Do you know that? And sometimes we forget about that. Sometimes we forget that all our good things that we have come from God, that he gives us our life and our breath, and he gives us our minds to think and our, our bodies to work, he gives us our health. The Bible says everything comes from him. So don't forget about God. Give thanks to him. Here's the second reason this guy's a fool. First, he forgets about God. Second, he forgets about others. So with all this stuff, he's not got enough space for it. So what does he decide to do? What does he decide to do, yeah? He doesn't share, no? Yeah? He decides to make bigger barns, doesn't he? Right, I've got a little, uh, I've got a little um, task for you here, okay? I need two teams of volunteers. Would you pick <laughs> two teams of three? Thank you. Okay. What have I got here? Your job is to build a bar, okay? You've got two teams. You need to build the biggest bar you can. Okay. And I've been collecting the bomb roll, especially just for this. So there you go. Okay, so and then there's some card because we might get a, uh, a little uh, roof for it. So there you see teams. Okay, who can build the biggest barn? Not the biggest tower, it needs to be a barn. But I can put my triple pepper in. Alright. Okay. And you've got 60, well, I'll give you, well, I'll give you 40 seconds, right? Are you marked? Yes, that's all you've got to build the barn. Uh, you three there. You three there. Are you marked? Get set. Go. There you go. Slightly like repeat of this. Got you there. 30 seconds left. Oh, you've gone for the round barn. I like it. You've got 20 seconds left. You need a roof on it. 10 seconds left. Get your roof on. Five seconds left. Five. Four, <laughs> three, two, you get your roof on. Okay, I'm going to that roof on. Right, give them a clap. Yeah. 
million. Both very good. Okay. Yeah, that fits in there. Where's it all? <laughs> oh, oh, look, you did it all. There you go. Well done. Go take a seat. Very good. So this guy decides he's going to build bigger barns, even bigger than the ones he built, there to put all this stuff in. And it's interesting why he says, I'm going to build it all, store it up for myself. And this is what it's, he says, so I can take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. So I can enjoy a really nice retirement, basically. And Jesus says he's greedy. He only thinks about himself and his own comfort, but he forgets about others. He forgets to share. And that's a real challenge, isn't it, in the Bible? In that first reading, if you were listening, when they were harvesting their fields, what did God tell them to do with the, with the stuff at the edge of the fields? Yeah? Leave it for the foreigner or the poor or, or the people who didn't have much. And, and he said, when you, when you shake your olive trees and get the olives off it, just shake it once. If there's some left, leave them. For other people, or, or, or when you're picking your grapes and you miss a few, don't go back, just leave them. Think about others. This man does it, he forgets about God. And he forgets about God, so he forgets about others. He forgets that God cares for us. And then here's the third reason he's a fool, according to Jesus. And this is probably the worst reason. He forgets about heaven. What happens to this man in the end? What happens to him? What happens to this man? Yeah? He dies. And what? And all this stuff is still stuck in these barns? It's there? He never gets to, he never gets to take life easy. He never gets to chill out. He never gets ready for heaven because he's all about this life and not the next. He's no friendship with God. He's got no life forever. He's got no good things in heaven. And that's why God calls him a fool. And then Jesus says, this is how it will be for anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. So he's saying, don't forget about God. Don't forget about others. Don't forget about heaven. But instead, be rich towards God. And you might be thinking, what does that mean? What does it mean to be rich towards God? Well, Jesus tells us a few verses later, he says this. He says, to be truly rich... Seek God's kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Don't be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions, give to the poor, and provide purses for yourself that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near, no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So I think we learn three things there. How to have treasures in heaven. The first is this, to receive. Can we go like this? Receive, yeah? So we've seen that God loves to give good, good things, haven't we? And in that Bible passage, God said, I'll give you the kingdom. I'm your father, I love you. It's there on a plate for you. Jesus died to forgive your sins so you can be in my kingdom. Receive it. Trust in Jesus and receive the kingdom and be truly rich. <laughs> so receive and then share should we go like that so we receive and then we share with others he said what did he say sell your possessions and give to the poor isn't it great to share what we have with others so receive share and then prepare why well, am I pointing upwards what are we to prepare for yeah Heaven. The Bible tells us to use everything we have, not to try and get rich in this world, but to be ready for heaven, to, to, for God's kingdom to grow so people can hear about him, so we can love people like God says, so we can grow as the people of God. So let's do that again. So receive, share, prepare. So just something to consider. Will we be rich towards God or will we be what God says 
is a fool. And that's up to us to think about. Uh, we're going to sing uh, again now, and uh, this is a good old-fashioned harvest hymn. Uh, we plough the fields, and in this song we talk about how all good gifts come from God, and so we thank the Lord for all his love. So let's uh, stand and sing. and scatter the good seed on the land but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand He sends the snow in winter the warmth to swell the grain the breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain all good gifts around from heaven above Then thank the Lord Oh thank the Lord For all His love He only is the maker Of all things near and far He paints the wayside flower He lights the evening star more to us his children he gives our daily bread all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above then thank the lord oh thank the lord for all his love we thank thee then O oh father I would now like to invite Karen to the stage for prayers. The response is slightly different to that. It's after I say, Lord of the harvest, please say, hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Let us pray. At this, our harvest celebration, we praise and thank you for the wonder, variety and beauty of all that you have created. You have gifted us this world to look after and share and provided everything we need to flourish and prosper. Inspire and enable us to restore and respect, to preserve and protect this beautiful world for all people now and in the future. Lord of the harvest, Hear our prayer. Generous God, at this harvest time, we thank you for all the good things you give us. As we thank you for our food, we remember those who don't have enough for even one proper meal each day. Lord, bless all those who suffer because of the greed of others. We pray for the homeless and those who are dependent on the charity of others. 
We pray for the work of NightSafe and Food Bank and Tear Fund, providing food for those in need. We give thanks for the generosity of our congregation today to help those charities tomorrow. Help us to share the harvest of the world more fairly so that everyone can be fed and there will be no more starvation. Lord of the harvest, hear Amen. our prayer. At this harvest time, we thank you for the hard work of all those who grow, produce and prepare our food, for the farmers, the processors, the transport delivery drivers and the shopkeepers. Bless all those, Lord, who do not earn a fair day's pay for their hard work, both at home and in other countries. Help us to buy local produce and fairly traded goods wherever we can, so that everyone will work with dignity and there will be no more poverty. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this harvest time, we thank you for the world we see around us, for the flowers, the trees and the animals, all those who care for them, Lord. Help us to appreciate the beautiful changing colours of autumn all around us. Help us to protect your creation by being careful about what we use, how we use our, your resources so that there will be clean water, clean air, and plenty of wild birds, mammals, and insects to maintain the ecological balance of our countryside. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all that is good in your creation and all those who bring the harvest of the land and sea. We are conscious of so much that we get wrong. So we give thanks too for your grace and patience with us when we fail to look after your world as we should. Help us to change so that we too become a new creation walking in the light of your gospel. Lord of the harvest, hear Amen. our prayer. At this harvest time, we ask for your blessings on our families and neighbours and on those who are sick. We bring before you those who are on our hearts today, including Kath and Yvonne, Sandra, Laura, June, Jen, Ava, Joe, Ellie, Lee and Norman, Claire, Elizabeth and family, Joe, Margaret, Megan, Dorothy, and Ken and Beryl. We give thanks for those who care for them and ask for your comfort to make them feel better. We pray for those who have died this week, including the family and friends of John Dixon. Bless those who are mourning the loss of a loved one and bring them your comfort and peace that you will be with them in heaven forevermore. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Help us to recognise, Lord, that we all need each other in our daily lives and the importance of good friendships and community and help us to become good stewards of all you continue to give us. Source of all life and giver of all that is good, hear our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let's all say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as you may. Give us today our daily bread, and give us our sins, as we give those who sin against us. Leave us not to the temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, well, sugar, we give uh, Neil and Leah a massive round of applause for leading that service. To our choir and to all of the uh, readers and to poemers and prayers, let's give them a round of applause. Just a couple of things before we uh, sing our final song. Every Thursday, we host a community cafe at Church of the Saviour up um, Sunnybank Roadway. And for people just to come, have a brew, have somewhere warm to go, 
maybe have a chat. So if you or someone you know might appreciate that, it's every Thursday, two till four at Church of the Saviour. Uh, in the morning of the Thursday, we have a toddler group, 9.30 uh, till 11 uh, at Church of the Saviour for, for any kids that aren't at school yet. Um, at the end of October, uh, you might know that there's a community uh, scarecrow hunt uh, going on. Uh, we're hosting that in our hall here. But also, the, the day after, the Sunday, we're having a special guest service we'd love to invite you to, thinking through why Jesus is the light of the world. So if you'd like to come along and hear a bit more about that, that's on Sunday the 30th of October, 9.30, usual time. Um, we collect um, bits for Samaritan's Purse for the boxes. Can we wait? Do you want to say something? Else? We... Isabel, do you want to come up? It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> okay, so um, Margaret gave an announcement last week about the um, shoebox appeal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> about the I shoebox appeal um, for Operation Christmas Child. So basically, what they do is they put together a shoebox. You can put together a shoebox every year, send it off, and it goes to children who are in um, you know war torn or deprived areas of the world. This year, they're looking to send about 80% of them to the Ukraine. Thanks. So, Isabel, okay. So, Isabel and Zara and the Brown unit, um, obviously recognising putting together a whole shoebox can cost quite a lot of money. They're trying to <clears throat> collect as many items in as they can so that they can actually put together at least one shoebox, hopefully more. And we are also raising um, money to get them shipped off. Yeah, so obviously we have to pay money to ship them off as well. I think it's £5 per shoebox. So Isabel will be doing jobs and to raise money to, yeah, to, to send them dancing. off. So we're asking as many people as we can to help out by donating items so the brownies yeah. can send off um, as many shoeboxes as they can. So I'll put a box in for you next week. Um, is there anything you want to say, girls? Um, if you want more information about what to put in those boxes, what to collect, oh, I'll leave a list in the fire or, or talk to Charlotte. Our next men's event is on the 20th of October. We'll be making pizza and uh, cooking them in a pizza oven. Uh, and there'll be a short talk about uh, being a man of God. So if you'd like more information about that, see me or John on the sound desk. Uh, and please make sure you sign uh, for church attendance, even if you think you might not need it. It's really helpful just to put your name down, put your child's name down on the list uh, in the foyer. We've got, uh, we've got our normal church collection today by contact list uh, and a box at the door. But also, if you'd like to give to our designated charity, they're called Tear Funds. Um, they respond to disasters, develop communities, envision the lo global church and change unjust policies. Uh, there's, these flat, there's these little sort of envelopes, uh, both next to the collection box and on the table in the foyer. If you want some more information or if you want to give specifically to Tear Fund, stick your money in there, fill in some uh, details if you want it to be gift aided, put it in the box, we'll make sure that goes uh, to the Tear Fund collection. So let's pray as we uh, thank God for all he's given us and that we can give. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own. Our final song is called There Is a Higher Throne. And in this song, we remember that this world isn't all there is, uh, but there's a higher throne. Jesus sits on it in heaven. And that is where we want to be rich. That is where our future is if we're trusting him. That is where we want to be investing in and praying for and living for. So let's stand and sing this final song.
Please sit for a closing prayer. Father God, we just sung of the glory of heaven, the place where you'll be our shepherd king, where thirst and hunger will be no more. Well, every tear will be wiped from our eyes. Thank you that you offer that us as a gift. Thank you that we can receive it through trusting Jesus. Thank you that that is where our heart can be. That is where our treasure is. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forevermore. Thank you so much for coming. Do stick around uh, for a brew. Uh, brews will be served in there, but if you stay in for one, grab one and then come back into the church hall, please. Uh, let's uh, finish saying the grace to each of them. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. It's hold. I know on that final day I'll 